guys, welcome to another episode of Made in Mombasa. My name is Gabriela Nashiva, your host for today, and we are here with Mr. Richard Chacha, and he'll introduce himself more to us. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. Uh, yes, you rightly mentioned I'm Richard Chacha, um, Director of Communications and Public Relations, Mombasa County. Uh, specifically in the governor's office. So, um, married, uh, father of four, okay. and uh, third born. That is a good intro. In family of eight. Good introduction for you. I hope that is. Uh, so, Mr. Chacha, what say. do you do for yeah. our great county of Mombasa? Well, my main job here yes. is to communicate to the inner public, internal public and external publics on uh, what the county does, mm -hmm. uh, what the governor does, what he stands for and uh, therefore I coordinate uh, my team, media team uh, to Turn out uh, the and and of course making uh, the governor's image look better through the messages that we send out. Okay. So basically, I am in touch with the external media. Yes. We also do social media, and uh, within the county, we also communicate to staff okay. uh, from the governor's office and from where he sits. So, that's so basically, yes. I am the governor's spokesperson. Okay. Yes. So how is a day? Like in the morning, you wake up, you come to the office. How do you briefly take us through your day? When you get here, when well, I wake up, do you I, have a routine? Yes, I have a routine which yes. I don't go against. Uh -huh. um, from back in the days, yes. I wake up at six. Okay. So I'm in the office by seven thirty. So when I once I get here, I go through the newspapers, see what uh, the papers have written about yeah. about uh, the county, about my governor, yeah. and also getting to understand uh, what happens uh, in the outside world, okay. Okay. nationally and of course outside. Okay. So after that, I would take my coffee, yes. and mm -hmm. uh, then if there is a meeting to update my team and plan for the day mm -hmm. we normally have a short meeting okay. so to plan who goes where and uh, what time yeah. so that is done of course after consultation with the governor's personal assistant okay. to know his diary mostly we know a day before mm -hmm. what the governor is uh, going to do okay. or where he's going uh, on this particular day so we plan our events okay. But you also realize it's not all about the governor. It's about what other departments do because there is a very thin line separating the governor's uh, work and the departments because everything the departments do are done on and for the governor, on behalf and for the governor. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I do. So from there, uh, perhaps I will have a snack mm -hmm. maybe around 11 a bottle of water at one o'clock i don't do lunch i do lunch in the house okay unless now i have a lunch date yeah. um, business lunch um I, I don't normally do lunch in town mm -hmm. so i normally leave the office by three oh. as uh, okay. yes by three without delay unless there's something very pressing yeah but I leave the office by three um, because, you know, it's not easy sitting on this uh, from morning to on that time. So I, then from there I attend my physiotherapy. Okay. At times I do massage therapy. Yes, so then uh, after that, uh, that's the it. Day the over. day is over uh, at work now. Work, nice. Yeah. Okay, now let's take it a bit back to when you started your career. 
how come you decided on journalism and not maybe something different? I think this was uh, inborn. Mm -hmm. Some people, when people say it's inborn, yeah. at times uh, there are those who do not understand uh, or they don't qualify that. I started. I had a lot of interest in uh, in uh, what is happening in the country, mm -hmm. current affairs from the days I was a young person. Yeah. So I would steal my father's uh, radio and um, you know listen to news. Yeah. My dad would listen to news maybe seven in the morning and then he leaves. So I'll want to follow up and listen to news from nine, one o'clock yeah. throughout the day. Yeah. So those days um, I would um, even have, I would keep uh, the tab on who is the DC, who is the PC, where, mm -hmm. and I had a list. And I was listening that from radio. So you passed your history well, eh? Because you were yeah, well on current affairs. Yes, but back in the days. So I used to have a list. I knew which ministers are where. When there is a reshuffle, I would have my pen. Mm -hmm. I would um, update. And then when I went to high school, mm -hmm. I started something that people thought was a joke. Okay. I would, uh, yeah, I would uh, prepare news and read during oh, wow. the assembly on Tuesdays and uh, and, and Thursdays. That's so amazing. then I, I incorporated some two people who were working with me, mm -hmm. but people preferred me reading the news. So we were collecting news items from within, within the school, the school. Okay. I just make it interesting and then you read, yeah. uh, you read for them, you report. Okay. So at times, you know, you would read something and the administration was not happy. Uh, yeah, yeah so, so that's how it started. You okay. see, you, you also learn later on that, uh, you know, news doesn't have to please everyone. Yeah. It's news, so we tell it as it as it is. is. That is true. So that's how I started, and uh, when I finished fourth form, I had a lot of options to become a teacher. My father didn't know my 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 intentions and where my interest was. Mm -hmm. So there was uh, an offer on the table to go and become a cadet officer, mm -hmm. Kenya Air Force. There was uh, nursing on the table, mm -hmm. there was teaching. And now it happened that that year when I finished KIMC, which was the only college then mm -hmm. offering journalism, mm -hmm. serious journalism courses, yeah, yeah. was not um, taking people that year. There was no intake, mm -hmm. so I had to wait. And my dad thought I'm wasting time at home. But then I told him I'll wait and apply the following year mm -hmm. because they were taking people the following year. Okay. And then he thought I was uh, I was not okay in my head. So I told him this year I'll assist you, do your business, um, running your errands at home. Next year I will apply. And I was so confident. So when when uh, that time came, I applied, and lucky enough, I was um, offered a place at KMC. Okay, that is yes. very like the passion was there from the start. From the beginning, and I knew from right what, from then what yeah. I wanted to do. Okay, so maybe you how how was it then like? journalism and communication generally from back then to how it is now and a little bit of the future do you see a future in it or do you think computers will take over and give us news um there is no way computers will take over it depends on how you tell your story it depends on how you communicate what you say how you say it and when you say it so normally uh, people still don't trust social media, for instance, that you get 
information from social media and you take it as gospel truth. That is not the case. That's why even if you go to the US, where computers and, um, and, and technology was introduced many years ago, you still have newspapers and people read newspapers. People still watch news religiously. So the only thing that I think will change is uh, the fact that, for instance, if it's news, it has to be real time. So you will find um, 24-hour channels being more popular, just like radio is, uh, more live uh, coverage of uh, functions and, uh, and events, uh, because people want to know yeah and, and yeah and and, and kept yeah, people want to be kept updated throughout that leads me to my next question um the young um professionals coming from university do you think they have space in the in the media because most of the time people who have been there are uh, more preferred people are used to them they are you know the, the times when you switch on your tv you know 9 p.m. news is so and so, and you're looking forward to that. So, do young people is it will they be easily absorbed into the into the market? Yes, the only problem is uh, when young people come out of the university or when they set out to do a course on yeah. journalism, they want to be news anchors. <laughs> they just want to appear on TV on or TV. to be heard on radio. Yeah. I mean, when I was in college, that was the last thing you would think of. Really? I mean, it's an added... It, when you're, you're reading news yeah. or anchoring, mm -hmm. it's an added value. You first of all need to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Then yeah. when you want to anchor, then that is just an added uh, value on it. So you're able to... Yeah. So, so there are people who go there just to, they want to appear on TV, and that, uh, that, is, um, that will destroy them. Yeah. You need to have passion, you need to have interest in journalism, uh, in media, for you to succeed. If you have no interest, you are there because you want to be uh, so and so, mm -hmm. uh, then perhaps you will get it wrong. But the, uh, the, the job opportunities, the market is wide open. There are so many chances, there are so many opportunities that are available. Yeah. We have hundreds of uh, radio stations, TV stations are so many now, and they are offering job opportunities. So it depends on what you're able to do, how you're able to do it, and how best you can, you can, you can do it. So yeah. uh, the people, young people should, uh, yes, continue pursuing uh, journalism courses because jobs are there just uh, make sure you can do it and uh, get to do it okay um another thing that we can notice with our media in kenya the i don't know if we can say that the girl child does not have okay maybe it's a threatened they're threatened in the industry because you see there's so many scandals of different female um, journalists who've been in different trouble in different I don't want to mention names or anything but they have been in trouble because of one thing or another maybe it's their social life or what ends up you know being exposed on TV and mostly it's the females so is it that maybe they should not really be on the limelight or what's what's your take on that no not really uh, there are so many ladies who have succeeded in this industry yes. and there are so many role models uh, in the industry. Yeah. Um, there are those who go there because they want to be so and so. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who believe in shortcuts. And um, they are not able to separate their social life and, um, and, and you see, and the profession. It is simple. Mm -hmm. When you go to the media, go and do what you want to do. If you have an opportunity to, uh, to be on screen, Please uh, stick to your profession. There are so many people, of course, who will be seeing you on screen. Mm -hmm. They will admire you. 
they will come they will want you to be their girlfriend or, or wife for instance and um, that is okay but then just make sure you separate your social life from uh, from what you do okay. you, you these days in the era of social media you will go misbehave out there and uh, tomorrow your career is destroyed is your true. stories will be all over the place you are doing ABCD and how you are doing it with whom mm -hmm. you know for instance you are married and uh, then you are seen with uh, someone some some different person but then the biggest problem is the temptation money temptation to to some of these girls in the media mm -hmm. they want to be they are lured easily by money because they want to drive a big car they want to have a big house and so when the rich people offer them you know um, they approach them with big money with big offers then they are easily uh, they are easily swayed okay. and so you stick to a profession and you will succeed otherwise yeah. uh, you will destroy your life I understand. and and uh, some of these people I can tell you for free mm -hmm. will not even want to be associated with you the moment you leave the screen okay we're taking a short break we'll be right back